Hi everyone, in this video you will learn how to solve simple equations. Let's start with basics. Let's say I have this equation 6 equals 6. The left side of the equation equals to the right side of the equation. This equation is always true. So we can apply same operations to both sides of an equation and that equation is, we can say it's still true. So uh, let's see what I mean. I mean, if we add or subtract or even multiply or divide a value to the left side of the equation and we do the same to, to the right side of the equation, that equation will be still true. So let's try it. Let's say I'm going to add a 2 to the left side of this equation and then I, I'm adding the same thing, 2, to the right side as well. So this equation should be still true. Let's check it. I have 6 plus 2 on the left side, which is 8. And on the right side, I have 6 plus 2, which is 8. So left side equals right side. So this equation is still true. How about if I uh, add something to the left side? Uh, not add, we just did adding. If I multiply something to the left, and I multiply that thing to the right side as well. Let's say I have 6 times... 3 on the left side, and I multiply the right side by 3 as well. So on the left side, I have 6 times 3 is 18. On the right side, 6 times 3 is 18. So this equation is still true. So the point here is we can uh, apply same operations to both sides of the equation, and that equation will be still true. It doesn't matter if you add, subtract, multiply, or uh, divide. The equation is still true. Solving an equation. So solving equation means find the value of that variable. Uh, how we do this, the first step, we have to isolate the variable. We need that variable by itself on one side of the equation. And then if there is a coefficient or fraction, we have to get rid of that and then solve for that variable. So let's do some examples. Again, we start with basic, uh, simple examples, and we move on to a little more complicated ones. So look at this one, x plus five equals 11. So I have this equation. As we said, we need to isolate the variable. I need to isolate x. I need x on one side by itself. I don't want this five on the left side. I have to get rid of this five. How can I do that? I can subtract the five, so that five can cancel this five out, and I will be left with x, right? So let's do that. I can say x plus five, and I subtract the five from left side, and on the right side I have 11, but as we said, in order to keep this equation equivalent, to keep it true, I have to do the same thing to the right side as well, so I have to subtract the 5 from right side as well. Okay, on the left side, I have x plus 5 minus 5, so this plus 5 minus 5, they cancel each other out, so on the left side, I have x by itself, and on right side, I have 11 minus 5, which is 11 minus 5 is just 6. So this is our answer. If you want to check your answer, if you want to verify it, you can just plug in the 6 into this equation and that should, uh, the equation should be true. So let's do that. I have x plus 5. So instead of x, let's plug in 6. So I have 6 plus 5 on the left side. And on the right side, I have 11. So 6 plus 5 is 11. Right side, I have 11. Left side equals right side. So this is true. The answer is correct. How about this one? I have negative 6 plus x equals 2. We want to solve this equation. It means we have to solve for the, that variable. I have to solve for x. I want to know what is x. So how can we do that? I have to isolate x. I have to keep uh, x on one side of this equation. So on the left side, I have x and I have a negative 6. I want to get rid of this negative 6. I don't want it on the left side. So how can I do what? How can I get rid of it? I can add a 6, so that positive 6 and this negative 6, they cancel each other out, and I will be left with x on the left side. But let's do that. 
I can say negative six plus six. I'm adding a six and plus x on the left side. And on the right side, I have two and I have to add a six on the right side as well in order to keep this equation equivalent. I cannot just add something to the left and leave the right side. I have to do this exact same thing on the both side of the equation, right? So I have to do two plus six on the right side as well. Again, this negative six and positive six, they cancel each other out. On the left side, we have x alone. And on the right side, I have two plus six, which is eight. So this is our answer. And again, you can just plug it in into this equation to verify your answer. So let's do that. I have negative six plus x and x is just eight. It should be equal to the right side. So negative six plus eight is just positive two on the left side. On the right side, I have positive two. So this is correct. This answer is correct. Okay, this is one way, one method to solve this equation. There's another method, which I believe is a little faster. And I usually use that. So let's talk about that one as well. I want to solve these two examples with different methods. Okay, two same examples. So let's take a look at the first one. X plus five equals 11. We said we need X on the left side by itself, right? I want to get rid of this five. How can I do that? I can just simply remove this positive five to the right side of the equation and change the sign. So whenever we're moving something from one side of the equation to the other side, we have to change the sign of that term. So if I'm moving this term from left to right, I have to change the sign of this term. So I have X on the left side. On the right side, I have 11. And I'm moving this positive five to the right side. So it becomes negative five. So X equals 11 minus five. So X equals 11 minus five is just six. This is the exact same answer. So this is another method to solve this type of equations. How about this one? I have negative six plus X equals two. So I need X on one side alone. So I need to move this negative six to the right side. And by moving it to the right side, the sign will change. Negative six becomes positive six. So on the left side, I have X equals on the right side, I have two already, so write that down. And I'm moving this negative six to the right side, so it becomes positive six. So on the left side, I have x. On the right side, I have two plus six, which is eight. So this is our answer. And this is the exact same answer. We did it with the different method. All right, let's do more examples. I have two x equals eight. Again, we need x by itself. We need to isolate x, but the x has a coefficient here. I need to get rid of that coefficient. How can I do that? This is two x, I can divide it by two. So this two and this two cancel each other out because two over two is just one and I have one x on the left side. But when we are dividing or adding or whatever, when you're applying an operation on the left side, you have to do, apply the exact same operation on, on right side as well, right? So I have to divide eight by two as well. So I have 2x over 2 on left side equals 8 over 2 on right side. 2x over 2, this 2 and this 2 cancel each other out. I have x on the left. On the right side, I have 8 divided by 2, which is 4. And this is our answer. x equals 4. How about this one? x over 3 equals 5. I have a fraction. I need to get rid of this fraction. I need x alone. How can I do that? I can multiply this by the denominator of this fraction. I can multiply it by three. If I multiply it by three, I can get rid of that fraction and I will get X alone, right? So if I'm multiplying left side by three, I have to multiply right side by three as well. So on the left side, I have three times X divided by three equals, on the right side, I have five times three. So three X divided by three, this three and this three cancel each other out. Three over three is just one. So I have one X on the left side. I don't need to write the word one equals five times three, which is 15. This is our answer. And if you want to verify your answer, if you want to test it, you can just plug it in for this equation and that should be true. Let's do that. I have X. So instead of X, I plug in 15 over three 
it should be equal to the right side, which is 5. So 15 over 3 is just 5. On right side, 5. So left side equals 5 side. Uh, left side equals right side. So this is true. How about this one? I have negative x equals 6. I need x, positive x, not negative x. So I have to get rid of that negative. There is two way, there's two methods to get rid of this negative. As you know, first of all, this is an invisible one here. This is just negative one x, right? So how can I get rid of that negative one? I can just divide this by negative one and divide right side by negative one as well. So negative one over negative one is positive one x. So I have positive x on the left side. On the right side, I have six over negative one, which is negative six. So x, positive x equals negative six. That's how you get rid of the negative and you solve for x. Another way is that you can, whenever you have a negative x equals something, in order to get rid of that negative, you can just simply multiply the both side of the equation by negative one. So negative one times negative x, so this is just negative one x, negative one times negative one is positive one. So on the left side, I have positive one x. And on the right side, as we said, we have to multiply this by negative one, right? <laughs> left side by negative one, right side by negative one. On left side, I have x, positive x. On right side, I have six times negative one, which is just negative six. This is our answer. Okay, let's move on to twisted equations. So when we have twisted equations, we just gonna follow the same procedure. Isolate the variable term, that's the first thing to do. And the second thing, second step is to get rid of the coefficients and fractions. So let's solve this, uh, this equation. I have 4x plus 10 equals 34. So the first thing we need to do is to isolate this variable, this term with the variable, right? The variable term. So let's do that. So I have to keep this on the left side. And then, okay, again, when we're solving this type of equation, I have to keep the variable term on one side and move all the constant term. This is a constant term, this is another constant term. I have to move all those constant terms to the other side. So I have to move this to the right side. So I have 4x on the left side equals, on the right side I have 34, and I have to move this positive 10 to the right side, so it becomes negative 10. So 4x equals 34 minus 10, that's 24. And now I have to get rid of this coefficient. How can I do that? Simply divided by the coefficient, which is four. So four X divided by four and 24 divided by four. So four X divided by four, that four cancels that four. On the left side, I have X. And on the right side, I have 24 divided by four, which is six. That is our answer. X equals six. Okay, how about this one? I have 3x minus 5 equals 16. So again, I have a, a variable term. I have to keep this variable term on one side isolated by itself, right? And I have to move all the constant term to the other side. So let's do that. I have to move this to the other side. So on the left side, I have 3x equals. On the right side, I have 16 if I move this negative 5 to the other side, it becomes positive 5. So I have 3x equals 16 plus 5. That is 21. So now I have to get rid of this coefficient. How can I do that? I can just divide this term by 3 and divide this term by uh, the other side by 3 as well. So left side divided by 3, right side divided by 3. So the equation, the, we keep the equation equivalent, right? Okay. 3x divided by 3. This 3 and this 3, they cancel each other out. On the left side, we have x. And on the right side, I have 21 divided by 3, which is 7. This is our answer. If you plug into this equation and you make sure your answer is correct. How about this one? x over 4 plus 3 equals 8. Again, we have to uh, isolate the variable, uh, the term with the variable 
this one and we have to move all the constant term to the other side so we have to move this to the right side so on the left side i have x over 4 equals on the right side i have 8 and i'm moving this positive 3 to the right side so it becomes negative 3. so on the left side i have x over 4 equals on the right side 8 minus 3 which is positive 5. and now how can i get rid of this fraction I can multiply it, multiply both sides by a 4, right? And multiply this by 4, multiply 5 by 4 as well. So this is just 4x divided by 4. So this 4 and this 4 cancel each other out. I will be left with x on the left side and 5 times 4, which is 20 on the right side. So this is our answer. But that's how we solve simple equations. In the next video, I'll explain how to solve more complicated equations and also more complicated uh, like equations involving fractions. Thank you for watching.